Hi everyone, Kendall here with Lousy Llama Creations. Today, we're going to be making a bumblebee. This is a beginner-friendly pattern, perfect for somebody who's never crocheted before. I'm going to be going over everything you need to know to make your very first crocheted bumblebee. There's five big skills we're going to be focusing on in this video. Making single crochets, increases, decreases, color change, and how to do a magic ring. For materials, you're going to be needing medium weight for worsted yarn in yellow, black, white, and a very small amount of pink just for the blush. You're going to be needing a 5 mil mil millimeter crochet hook, tapestry needle, stitch marker, scissors, stuffing, and 12 millimeter safety eyes. Uh, bonus points if you have your cats here to help you. This is Peanut. She will certainly be making an appearance in this video. Also for our materials, if you are following from one of our crochet kits, it has everything you need, except you'll need a pair of scissors. And if you did not add on a crochet hook, you'll be needing a five millimeter crochet hook. If you're following from one of the kits, it has plenty of extra yarn, extra stuffing, extra supplies. You should be good to go. If you have any issues whatsoever, please reach out to me. I, I can send you more yarn if you made a mistake and you're out. Whatever it needs to be, I'm here to help. Also for my crochet kit users, your kit comes with a written PDF pattern. On that webpage where you logged in and you found this video, you can find a PDF that has more pictures, step-by-step -step instructions. So if you're feeling a little lost, start there and kind of print that out and follow along with the video. If you're not following from a crochet kit, first of all, welcome to the channel. My name is Kendall and my main job is to sell beginner crochet kits. I make and design all my own kits. It comes with all the supplies you need and all the help and support you need as well. If you like written PDFs and written patterns, go ahead and follow that link below. And you can also just purchase a pattern if you don't want the kit and the supplies, but you like following with a pattern and a video, down below, I got you. I think I covered all of our bases, so let's jump in and start making our bumblebee. All right, so we're gonna start with our yellow yarn and we're gonna start by making a magic ring or a magic circle, it's the same thing. I'm gonna take my crochet hook I have my yarn, this is our tail, our dead end, the end of your yarn. This is the yarn that's attached to the ball or the skein. You're gonna take it and wrap it around your hand to form an X. You're gonna hold it in the middle. Hook goes under, then over, and we're gonna scoop this underneath. Just like that. We're going to twist it up and pull it off our hands. And then do this thing called a chain, which is when we pull our yarn through our loop. So I'm going to put the yarn on the crochet hook and pull through. And that's our magic ring. But let me show you again. I have my tail, wrap around to make an X, hold in the middle, under, over, pull through, twist up, and then do our chain. We're then going to make six single crochets in this loop. Our single crochets are one of the smallest, most basic stitches of crochet. You'll find it in a tons of the stuffed animal or amigurumi patterns. Crocheters love single crochets. To do one, you're going to insert your hook in the middle of the loop, yarn over, which is when we place the yarn on top of the hook, pull through, so we have two loops on your hook, yarn over again, and then pull through both loops. And that's one single crochet. So again, I'm going to go through the middle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops, and that's a second. Through the middle, 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. That was stitch three. So we'll do four, five, and six. Each stitch is this little V, a little oval. Can't see it too well on the sides. Um, if I pull it apart a little bit, you can see it's that, that's a stitch. I'm gonna take my tail and pull it so that it actually forms this cute little ring. And now we have the start of our crochet piece. These are our stitch markers, which are like little clothespin, safety pin looking things, safety pins, not clothespins. Look at things. We're going to attach it into the last stitch that we made, that V. Close it up. This is gonna help us find the beginning and the end when we're working in our rounds. Because we're gonna be working in a spiral, so we're just gonna keep on going around and around and around. So this will make sure we know the beginning and the end of each round. Our magic ring with the six single crochets, that was one round. So now we're going on to round two, which according to our pattern says increase six times. An increase is just two single crochets next to each other. So we have six stitches. At the end of round two, we should have 12. So we're gonna put two stitches in each of the six so that we have 12, so we're just doubling it. I'm gonna insert my hook into the first stitch that we made. The first one's always a little tight. It's not you, it's the crochet piece. Just kind of wiggle, stick it in. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through again. So I have one single crochet. Before we move on, I'm gonna stick my crochet hook in the same stitch. And do another single crochet. So now we have two in one stitch. I like to picture it like a little flower so we have like a small beginning but then we want even petals on the side so it kind of gets bigger evenly. I'm gonna move to the next stitch. Again I'm working in a spiral so I'm literally just scooting over and do another increase. So that's one single crochet, and then in the same hole, doing a second. And then I'll do that again. And again. Moving over. I'm in my last one, and this is my cat Cashew. He likes to help with videos sometimes. I'm sure his sister Peanut's gonna help too. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. I'm gonna do our increase. And then I'm gonna put the stitch marker back in to the new end of the round. So we're kind of moving it up each time. And now we have this small little circle, which is round one and round two. You should have 12 single crochets at the end of this round. And you can count them by looking at those Vs. Grab my tapestry needle. So like that's one, two, three, four. You can do this all the way around so you have 12. The next round, round three, it says we're gonna do a single crochet and then an increase. And there's a comma in that bracket, which is important. So in the next stitch, we're gonna do one single crochet. And then we're done with that. In the next stitch, that comma means we're moving over, we're gonna be doing an increase. Which is again, those two single crochets. So this repetition for the round 
is a little series of three. One, and then an increase. Or in my head, sometimes I'll say double. So one, and then a double. And we're gonna repeat this. So the next stitch, we're gonna do one. And then the next stitch, a double or an increase. And we're gonna do this for the whole round. So one, and then a double. One, then a double. And I know I'm crocheting fast. Hey, I've done it since I was 14 years old. Don't forget, one, pause this video. I will still be here for you. As well as that in the corner, the little gears button, you can change the speed. So yeah, I'll sound a little funny, but you can watch me slow down these stitches and it might be a little easier. You can see at the end, I removed my stitch marker, did my last increase, and then I'm gonna put it back. And our circle's getting a little rounder, a little bigger. You can tell it kind of curls up a little bit. That's okay, that's normal, no biggie. If it's curling up a lot, you might've messed up the pattern a little bit. You might've put too many increases. Um, so you might wanna take it out and kind of make sure you're counting. At the end of this row, you should have 18. Another thing to remember, this is our tail from that very beginning magic ring. This is the inside. So if you're looking at it and you're like, mine's kind of ugly. My stitches aren't clean. This tail's in the way. What am I doing? Boop. Just turn it around. Um, if you followed my um, tutorial for my um, crochet plants, a lot of people will show me their crocheted pot. And they'll be like, hey, mine's ugly and it doesn't sit weird. And it sits super weird and it's just, it's off. And then I'm like, flip it inside out. Boom. They did amazing work and they did it right. You just gotta flip it around. Next round, you're gonna start seeing a pattern here. It says two single crochets and then an increase. So single crochet two is different than an increase. So we're gonna do one, one, and then an increase. In newer crochet patterns, as in the past 10 years, you'll notice the word increase. Sometimes people use two single crochets instead. Um, I find that confusing. If you follow any Lousy Llama crochet patterns, I will always say increase versus single crochet two. If I'm saying single crochet two, I mean one and then one and then an increase. Let's not get confusing here. So we're gonna do one one and then an increase one one and then an increase and we'll do this for the whole round One, take out the marker, increase, and then put it back in. And now we have a bigger circle. Again, you can see mine carping a little bit, that's okay. The next round, we're going to be three single crochets and then an increase. So we're going to do one, 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 two, one, 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 and then an increase. And we're gonna do this for the whole round. One, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase 
And if you're wondering, yes, this is what I'm thinking in my head when I crochet pieces like this. So while I'm talking right here, back of my mind, I'm like one, two, three, increase. And that's how, kind of how I'm keeping track. You don't have to count that big total number of stitches um, unless you want at the end of each round, but you don't have to keep that in your mind. There's my increase. So yeah, crochet is a lot of counting, but it's usually nothing too high, at least for my crochet patterns. Boom. If you're wondering what I'm doing when I pull it off screen, I'm just pulling more yarn out of my skein um, or my ball or my cake or whatever you want to call it. Next round, uh, you might have guessed it. It's going to be four and then an increase. One, two, three, four, increase. And we'll do that for the round. One, two, three, four, increase. 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 And then one more. One, two, three, four, remove the marker, increase, put it back. One more round for our increases, it's going to be five. So one, two, three, four, five, increase, one, two, three, four, five, increase, one, two, three, four, five, Increase one, two, three, four, five. Increase one, two, three, four, five. Increase one, two, three, four, five. Remove the marker. Increase. Woohoo! We're done with our increases. So let's do a check-in. Let's see where we're at. You should have a relatively flat circle. If it is super pointed, your stitches are probably too tight. Tension is something you will just learn with experience, but maybe next time loosen your stitches a little bit. Mine has like a little bit of a poof, but that, that won't be bad, especially once we stuff it. This will be our front with those beautiful, nice, clean stitches. And this is the back with our tail. Mine almost looks like a little hexagon because you can kind of see the points. And that's because our increases stack up. So you're going to see these little points. 
there is a way to make this a perfectly round circle. I say let's not deal with that. We're beginners. I assure you, once you actually start building the bead, we're not going to notice. It doesn't matter. But this is where we're at right now. So for the next three rounds, we're going to be placing one single crochet in every single stitch. So no increases, no decreases, nothing weird. Just one single crochet all the way around. A trick I like to do is that instead of putting my stitch marker through the stitch, I like to put it on the side. Because technically as you add more rounds, our beginning is going to shift just a little bit, about one stitch, every time we go around. And you'll notice on the B, because we lined up the black stripes, that your color shift will change a little bit. This will make it so that black line, both of them, are super straight on our B. So I'm just going to single crochet one stitch, one single crochet into every single stitch. I want to go around and I'll show you what we're going to do with this. I'm coming up right on my stitch marker and instead of moving it or doing anything with it, I'm actually just going to keep on going. I just finished one of the three rounds, so I know this was the start, so then that's the end. I'm going to do this for two more rounds, one single crochet in each. I'm just going to leave this here. I'm just going to be looking at it to line it up. So go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to do two more rounds of single crochets and then we'll meet up and we'll show how to switch colors. So here's the end. One, two, three. Three rounds. But now I'm going to switch to black. And if you know how to do a single crochet, you know how to change colors. Which, lucky for us, we do know how to single crochet. You're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, just like the beginning of a single crochet. And then instead of yarning over with yellow, we're going to yarn on with black. I'm going to hook it on and then pull through. I'm going to tighten yellow in the back. Now let's do a single crochet in black to lock it in. Make sure you're not crocheting with the black tail. Make sure it's attached to the skein. There we have it. We're not going to cut yellow because we're going to be using it later but I like to keep it a little snug. So now I'm going to do three rounds of black all the way around three times, one single crochet in every stitch. You can totally see the beginning and the end of each stitch just by looking at where you change colors. So go ahead, let's just take this out. I don't need it right now. Base it off of this stripe. So go ahead and single crochet for three rounds and then I'll show you how to switch back to yellow. I'm coming right at the end of my third round of black. I know black is super hard to see on camera. If it's hard to see in person, make sure you're turning on all those lights and you can just kind of feel the stitch, which I know as a beginner crocheter is a little scary, but it you'll feel it more intuitive than you think. It's my advice. But now we're gonna switch back to yellow. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I did earlier when I switched to black. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, but then I'm going to, thank you Peanut, Peanuts woke up from her nap and is choosing chaos. I'm going to grab the yellow from the back and I'm going to use this as my yarn over and pull through. Tighten the black a little, and then I'm going to continue with yellow and do three stripe, the uh, three rounds, excuse me, three rounds of yellow. And then of course you're going to see the pattern. So after three rounds of yellow, you'll switch back to black. Yes, just by pulling it from the back, just like we did yellow. After three rounds of black, you're then going to switch back to yellow. Do three more rounds and then cut the black yarn. Thank you, Peanut. Because I'm making this video, I don't want to take the time to do all these stripes just because I want to show you the main skills. So mine's going to look super wonky. That's okay. 
I'm gonna finish a few more rounds of yellow. I'll show you how to add the face and then I'll show you how to close our body. When you're done with black, you're gonna leave quite a few inches of yarn. You're going to cut it. And then if you'd like, you can tie a knot with two tails in the back. Just make sure it's not too tight. Um, Cause you don't want, if you pull it too tight, your whole work's gonna twist and mess up. But leave a few inches, just do like a loose square knot on the back, just so you know your black's not gonna come undone. So I'm gonna do three rounds of yellow. And then I'm gonna pretend that's the end of my B, even though you will have two big old black stripes. It will go black, yellow, black, yellow, and then we'll close the body. So I wanna do that and then I'll show you how to do the face. This is where I'm pausing my B. I wanna put my marker in the last stitch, pull out my loop a little bit just so it doesn't come undone. This is what yours should look like. You should have the three stripes. Again, I'm doing a shortened version. This is what your stripes should look like. It's okay if they're not perfectly lined up or if you follow the black, either way is totally fine. But now I'm gonna show you how to do the face. We're gonna put that color change at the bottom. So this is the top facing us. I'm gonna set in my two black guys without um, putting the backs on. I wanna make sure they're on the same round, just so they're nice and even. And I'm gonna cut a piece of black yarn and put it on my yarn needle or my tapestry needle, whatever you wanna call it. Starting from the back, I'm gonna poke in one corner of the mouth. Wherever you wanna put the mouth, however big, you're gonna put in one, see, I don't like that. And we're gonna put it in one corner. There we go. Leave a few inches on the back and we're gonna draw a straight line to the other corner of the mouth. Here, I always say meep meep, because that's what it looks like. I'm gonna, from the back, I'm gonna poke through the bottom arc of the smile. So I'm gonna pull through, then I'm gonna scoop the straight line down and poke through the same bottom stitch. And then you can kind of round it out so it's not so pointy, unless you want it pointy. I go back and forth on what I like. On the inside, I'm going to tie a loose-ish square knot. Again, don't pull too tight because it will totally mess up your design. And I'm gonna trim it with about an inch of the tail left. Don't cut too close, it will come undone. My eyes are not attached yet. I have a piece of pink yarn for my little blush. Put that on the tapestry needle. Starting from the back, I'm gonna draw little straight lines wherever you want them. I like to do it before I attach the eyes just so it kind of sits like underneath it. And I like to go over it twice. Totally up to you what you want to do. You have enough yarn if you're following for my crochet kits to do so. Doing it twice, three times, four times, you should have plenty of yarn. I'm trying to match it on the other side, which is certainly not a strong set strong skill of mine but that's okay blush is not even anyway and it's definitely not on this bee you'll want to take more time and make it even boom and some cat hair in it too perfect <laughs> on the back again we're gonna do a loose square knot leave a little cut we're gonna put our backs on our eyes. It's like a little washer. We're gonna make sure it's nice and flush and then click it down. Same thing over here. And now we have our little smile. I like to place the eyes before I put the backs on. So if I decide with my smile, I wanna move my eyes somewhere else, it's a lot easier to do so. 
Once you put these washers in, these are safety eyes, they do not come undone. But just so you know, they are not suitable for children under three because technically somehow they still can come undone, but I have literally never been able to undo them once I place them. Now that we have our beautiful little smile, we gotta close this thing. We gotta stuff it and close it. Grab my stuffing. Okay. So to make it bigger, we did increases. To make it smaller, we're going to be doing decreases. I know, shocking, shocking, shocking. It says single crochet five and then a decrease. So we're basically going to be doing the exact opposite of what we did earlier. So five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. If an increase is two single crochets in one stitch, a decrease is combining two stitches together. I'm going to insert my hook yarn over, pull through, just like the beginning of a single crochet. But now I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. So you have three single crochets on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. That's a decrease. We're gonna do this the whole round. So one, whoop two, three, four, five, decrease. Insert your yarn, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. The next round, you're going to single crochet four, one, two, three, four, and then a decrease. Like I said, with, it's the same pattern as this, but with decreases. To help this video not be insanely long, go ahead and pause the video, do single crochet four, and then a decrease. The next round is single crochet three, and then a decrease and then single crochet two, and then decrease, but then we're gonna pause there. We're gonna talk about stuffing. So go ahead and do finish this round, do the next one of three single crochets decrease, and then the next round of two single crochet decrease, and then I'll show you how to stuff. I just finished two single crochet and then decrease round. My hole is getting smaller. Obviously mine looks weird because it doesn't have this stripe. Yours will look completely normal. Wood stuffing. So you have an insane amount if you're following for one of my crochet kits. You have plenty. But the trick is to pull it apart in small clumps and place it individually. You do not just want to roll it up and stick it in. It uses a ton of stuffing and it will make it not fluffy. You want to place it exactly where you want it so it's the fluffiest it can be. My second cat, Cashew, is trying to figure out if he can jump on the shelf next to me. He's thinking about it. Yep, he can. Congratulations, Cashew. Now, Peanut, the older sister, is a little jealous, so we'll see how that ends. Nope, she found yarn. She's fine. Okay, I'm still stuffing. Pulling it apart in small clumps, placing it in. Yeah, that's about good. Again, it looks stupid because there's not a second stripe. Yours won't look like this. Yours will be perfect. We gotta finish it up. So you're gonna be doing one single crochet and then a decrease. And then the last round is six decreases. With the stuffing, I find it easier to kind of push it away and then insert my hooks. You can also add more stuffing as you get closer to the end if you want it to look 
fluffier. So go ahead and finish that and I'll show you how to actually finish off the piece. I'm right at the end. Technically you should have six stitches left. If your counts were a little off, a little different, and you're like, oh no, I have seven or eight, it's totally fine, this is still gonna work. I'm gonna take out my hook, I'm gonna leave a nice long tail and cut it off. I'm then gonna pull my loop through so that it is fastened off. Taking my tapestry needle, I'm gonna put my tail on it. And we're gonna weave in and out of these final few stitches so that we can pull it tight. I always call this a cinch closure, just like a, a cinch bag would. Just like that, and then pull. Nice and tight. I like to add a knot at the very end of mine. And then we're gonna stick our tail through the body. And cut it off. If it sticks out a little bit, that's okay. You can use your needle and kind of poke it through. You can kind of rub it and squish it in. And here's my very weird looking bee, but yours will look like this, minus the wings. Good job. Let's do the wings. So super cool thing about these wings, that's basically the beginning of the bee. And you already know how to do that. So yeah, this is gonna be like super easy for you, which is, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. I love patterns like this. We're gonna start with our magic ring. Don't be afraid to pause this video and go back to the beginning to watch a slower version of this. Go in, over, pull through, chain one, and then six single crochets. I know I'm going fast. Please, please, please pause the video and go back to the beginning if you need it. I just try not, I, while I like to repeat myself in videos, I don't like to repeat myself an insane amount because this video will just be so long if I do that and I'm afraid people will get bored. And I, I don't want that. Pulling it tight. I'm going to do six increases. I wanna count these in my head. I'm not gonna use a marker. So I'm just going to do count to 12. Doing my six increases. And we know an increase is two single crochets in every stitch. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I want to put my marker in now. And I'm going to do one single crochet and then an increase. One, and then an increase. One, and then an increase all the way around. Remove the marker, increase. Marker back in. No more increases. We're gonna do one single crochet round. So one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. I believe there should be 18 single crochets total. This will cause it to curve a little bit and kind of turn in on itself, which is perfect because that's the exact look we want for our little bumblebee. 
By the way, my bubble bee's name is Harvey. Comment below what you're gonna name your bee. I love knowing what people make, what people name their little plushes. I always name all of mine um, before I release new crochet kits. So please tell me what you're gonna name your bee. Um, I also, I believe I had a pattern in the past that was Beatrice, which is pretty funny, but I don't know why I stuck with Harvey. Boom. Leave a nice long tail. Cut. Fasten off. I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to put this middle tail on my tapestry needle. And we're going to weave in this tail, which is when we're going to take our tail and we're going to stick it in between the stitches so that our tail doesn't come undone and all of our hard work doesn't go to waste. So you're literally going to stick it like in between the strands of the yarn, trying to get it like in between and not on top because this piece is going to show the front and the back because of the way we assemble it. I like to go three times in different directions and then cut. The second one's a lot easier. I'm gonna put my nice long tail on my tapestry needle. I have my weird looking bee. I'm gonna hold it on and then I'm gonna stitch it to the bee. I like to go do the whip stitch is when you go over and over and over. So nothing fancy, but I think this stitch kind of gives it some movement and you kind of like wiggle the wings, which is totally necessary for a bumblebee. Yeah, that looks good. You can sew it, if you want it to be like more like that, you can sew it more, you can sew it less, you can go over it twice if you want, totally up to you. We're then gonna stick this in the bee body poke it out somewhere, cut, and then poke it through. You'll want to make two wings. I placed mine, um, it's, mine's covering cat hair, this was just my sample. Um, I placed mine on that middle yellow stripe and I lined it up with the eyeballs. But again, you can put it however you want. This was my back, my bottom, and my bumblebee. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great time making this bumblebee. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps grow so I can provide more crochet tutorials for everyone. If you followed this video from one of my crochet kits, thank you so much. It means the world to me that you purchased a crochet kit from me. I hope I had everything you need. If you have any questions, please reach out so I can help and assist in any way you need so you can make your own bee. If you'd like more crochet kits, I have a Patreon account in which I send out a monthly kit um, of generally amigurumi, of food and animals and plants and whatever I can think of. Um, you'll get one crochet kit a month that are beginner focused, so you can work on really mastering those skills while getting a fun new project every month. On my website, I also have PDF written patterns, um, so if you like this bee but you want to get your own supplies, I have plenty of patterns that all come with a video tutorial step-by-step -step written instructions with pictures and my help and support along the way as well. Once again, my name is Kendall. This is Peanut. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.